just want to have a quick chat about catfishing with regards to the murders of Liberty German and Abigail Williams at the High Bridge in Delphi, February 13th, 2017. When children go missing, is there always such a response from law enforcement? Is there always such an activation of search teams, etc.? You'd say yes, uh, if for example, like Summer Wells, the child is five years old. Assessments are made whether there's going to be an Amber Alert put out, for example, which is what happened in the case of Michael Vaughan, who is still missing. And there is a lot of anger around the fact that an Amber Alert wasn't called in the case of Michael Vaughan. Libby and Abby being 13 and 14 years old, well, switch that around, Libby was 14, Abby was 13. Does this warrant the immediate response that was given by law enforcement to activate a lot of search teams and to focus on the bridge? with hundreds of people searching and searching and searching again and going back there to search again. 13 and 14 year olds could be prone to meeting up with people their own age and just going off to town to the ice cream shop, to someone's house whose parents aren't home to maybe watch videos and maybe have an illicit drink or try pot or just be naughty. Now, do I think Abby and Libby seemed like the type for that? Not really. They seemed to have a lot of freedom. I don't think they seemed to be in the position where they would be tempted to take more time for themselves, if you know what I mean. But would people be able to put this across to law enforcement in such a way that, okay, well, in this instance, I, I haven't believed other families before when they say their son would never run away, uh, but we'll believe you now that uh, Libby and Abby would never have left the bridge of their own volition, maybe with the 10 or 20 other young children that Kelsey says she saw there that day at one point, she says this and she takes it back. So, why this major response and could it explain why we seem to query a lot about what the family says maybe just because they were told to keep things hush hush and so they're not allowed to tell the real story because they've been asked to keep it quiet if the german family had said to law enforcement that Kelsey has been in touch with a catfish account or with this old person, however they described it, that really could mean they bring out the forces in the way that they did. Why wasn't it made public? I don't know. Investigation rules apply, I guess. But was that an absolute mistake? I really, it really pains me to know that Anna Williams wasn't told immediately about Abby and Libby. But if Anna publicly wants to leave that alone, she's got enough on her plate, well then that's her prerogative. So we can't really get our noses joint, out of joint on her behalf, but I think it's foul. So... When was Libby introduced to the Anthony Shots account? I sometimes feel like it sounds recent, as if it was at a sleepover that had just occurred. Um, but then that doesn't tie in to Libby having sent through 
any particular images and having built up this kind of relationship with this person and it doesn't sort of tie in with the 10 day prior reset of her phone that her aunt Tara did for her. So it might have been a while and if Keegan Klein is describing Libby as annoying, uh, that is his perfect person. He doesn't want the ones that are coy and aren't interested. He wants the ones that are enraptured with the mirage of Anthony Schatz. And that's Libby. So he says that she was annoying. So annoying makes her keen and it makes her a target. So What cap uh, culpability would law enforcement have for not sharing about Anthony Schatz and not warning other young people, you know? This is why it's so confusing. Nothing makes sense, but I guess they were trying to solve these heinous murders. And they've had to make decisions along the way. I guess maybe to not arrest Keegan Klein until 2020 because there was only so long they could hold him for if they couldn't find the evidence to arrest him for the murders, if indeed they think it's him or he has involvement. Um, yeah. It seems that Keegan Klein feels relatively secure about not getting charged because, you know, he's quite bold about, you know, he's sticking to his guns. He's not rolling over on anyone, right? Well, he's trying to angle someone towards, you know, friend number one um, and blame a lot of things, shift a lot of blame. But he seems well aware that the person on the bridge isn't recognizable by their features although according to some youtubers he is but he, he's aware of this he's pointed this out to law enforcement in interviews that you know unless a person can be identified in any images that are captured, then why would you confess? So it's all very confusing. You know, it is easy, I guess, to get very upset with all the weird things that Kelsey says and does. Um, but Pat, you know, we've got to remember she was 16 years old at the time. And is it, you know, in a lot of the interviews she was quite young and if she has been told not to say anything specific about the Anthony Schatz account, um, this might have been a difficult task for her. And she's denied catfishing and yeah. Sorry, I'm not saying this very well. I've got a lot of thoughts about it. It's just like, you've got to walk this like a tightrope, you know, which is really frustrating. Because it is undeniable that Kelsey has said she saw girls there, you know, did she just make a mistake and say, you know, who knows what's going through her head about what she thinks is best at the time to say, and what mistakes she's made that are innocent, that make her look like a complete freak at times. But you know, saying that she saw 10 to 20 girls you know, she didn't really elaborate. Did she mean as she then drove off through town? Do you somehow see the car park? Maybe she saw the car park and saw that there were groups of people in the main car park. 
as she went off so she knew people were at the trail I don't think she could possibly have meant 10 to 20 people right where she dropped Libby and Abby off on that little bit of strip of trail heading up into the system of the 501 and the 505 but then she later says she saw no one And nobody has come out to say that they saw Abby and Libby. Not one person. We've got Havmeister trying to nail down every one of the 70 odd people he says were there. Um, but has any of those, have any of those people said that they saw Libby and Abby? The whole thing is extremely queer. Sorry, I'm going to make this again. What do we know? I mean, Libby was definitely in touch with Anthony's shots. She probably was very flattered and her continued contact with this account might have been why she had a falling out with one of her friends and was why her friendship with Abby grew stronger. Libby and Kelsey share secrets. Kelsey did somehow look to see who Libby was in contact with prior to going to the bridge and did she delete some images that Libby had sent through to Anthony Shots? And, you know, did she hide or not hide the contact from law enforcement? Was she told to say it's not catfishing? And is this sharp investigative practice or absolutely bonkers? How can the public help solve a case when we don't have the truth? And how many other girls were put in danger because certain information wasn't shared if it was known? You know, I'd love to know how many people were there at the bridge. Did they expect both girls? Did Libby say she was bringing a friend? Oh, this is crap. What am I trying to say? It's so annoying not to be able to talk openly about this case. You know, um, just like with other cases where you just get absolutely shut down, but you just want to work through it work out what seems logical out of everything you know and it's kind of impossible to piece it all together to make any sense when you're not allowed to discuss it you know if Libby did not tell about catfishing why was there such an immediate and large search activated why were so many people sent to the bridge? Why was this so urgent? You know, what else happened in the search? Was it all just based on the premise that these girls were actually in mortal danger? Or was there a balance to the search where all of her friends were called every single place in town was gone to um, you know I know that apparently Mike Paddy was driving around at night um, or was Derek German I can't work it out you know what about Derek German and the license plate license debacle the driver's license issue is this just a rumor that he didn't have a driver's license because of his records 
then why is he not fined and put in prison and harassed for that the same way Ron Logan was? So is it rumor or is he just getting special treatment? You know, was he driving minor children around, some that aren't his own, in a car when he's unlicensed? Is he driving around performing work duties unlicensed? It's utterly ridiculous if he was. Why is he so special? You know, it, it's hard because the family, um, the German family, I mean, it's clearly... Germans and Paddies, you know, it's clearly plagued with felons and drug addicts. This is a fact. You know, Cody Paddy had just been released from jail on the Thursday before the girls went missing. Um, and he's got some very questionable attitudes toward young girls. And he's not related by blood to Libby, but he is... A young man just out of prison living in the home. I I question Becky Patty's parenting skill. How she is looking after Halsey and Libby as a better solution to other, you know. <sighs> when there's not a lot of supervision going on and... Why would Cody Patty be allowed to live in that home? Uh, you've got teenage girls around and a felon getting out of prison, family or not. He doesn't have that privilege. He should be earning his way back into the family. Kelsey can have all the solidarity that she likes for him, but... You have to be able to question these things. Because it is, it's a factor. It's a risk factor when people, you know, law enforcement, when they talk about victimology, okay? Victimology is... Got that water level rising for Libby, hasn't it? Catfished. Reset her phone because something got serious. Possibly lured to the bridge. Vulnerable girl from a broken home that has felons living in her home. Her father, still a drug addict. A drug addict with his own demons, as Kelsey says, living in the home. What is going through Becky Patty's mind? When a court gives custody away from a father and mother to a grandparent, what in God's name makes it okay for the parent that is deemed unworthy to be living in that household. Is Becky Patty the world's biggest enabler? Is she the world's biggest turn the other cheek? Her? Who had a grip? And what was going on and, and who's parenting these children? I mean, Libby just seems so outgoing. She seems like she's getting all the nurturing, the opportunities that a young girl could desire. She's taking classes at Purdue, a university where she is coming into contact with much more sophisticated persons than her 13, 14 year old self. She's active in sport and she is very active on social media. It's clear that Becky Patty, as her guardian, was not monitoring her online activity. 
and was not was not doing what it takes to keep Libby safe and you know why was it Tara German resetting the phone who did Becky get told this at the time did Kelsey know about it and and get help from Tara on Libby's behalf to do it because neither of them knew Kelsey or Libby how to do a reset was Tara privy to why so you know who has known about the catfishing or this contact between Libby and Anthony Schatz prior to bridge day other than Kelsey German and did Kelsey do the right thing immediately and tell about it and is that why there was such a wicked response such a big response it's not a normal response otherwise it's really not But it seems like they were frightened that something really, really bad had happened. And then we've got the raid that happened on the 25th of February in Peru at the Klein home. Electronics are taken, you know, devices are taken. Eventually another one's handed in by Kegan after he wipes it. Kegan and his father, I believe, deleted, you know, or there's no entries on their social media from a day before and sort of up to the 17th of February or something. Yeah. It's just too crazy. It's too nuts. And now it's five years later someone's in prison and he's not talking uh, what it comes down to i think is that they don't have dna they don't have dna they've interviewed enough people where they could have gotten dna from a lot of people even from julian powell um if i've had contact with him they could get hair sample saliva anything from him to test I don't think they've got DNA. I don't think they've got human DNA or whatever, or, or enough to, to test. So they're relying on a confession. The trouble is, yeah, relying on a confession and now maybe not to, not able to, you know, perform the shenanigans they might have in the past um, to get these confessions. Yeah, speak to you later.